Is that how it go? Swimmingly. <laughs> Sounds it. <laughs> I'm guessing he. I'm guessing he made some more compliments again, and then told you off again for something. As he always does. <laughs> like, well done on this, but you're also shit. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. All right, let's see here. Uh, we still need Lumina. There we go. There we go. Okay. All Welcome right. back. So, as it stands, we're not actually quite done with Thanatos' watch yet. There's one more thing that happens. Let me guess. Something happens because I get distracted. Oh, no. A couple minutes pass after your uh, little thing. And then... uh. On the edge of the clearing you guys are camping in, you hear the sound of the tr of the bushes rustling a bit. Quiet. I put my hand on Vermilion. And uh, slowly emerging from the tree line, looking very tentative, you see a trio of black chocobos. Uh -oh. oh. Oh, good, they're okay. Rocket's still asleep. Okay. Voice in the wind says, wake us. Okay. Wake up the party! <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I go over and nudge everybody awake. Alright. Mm. Oh, I just got to sleep, what is it? Holy. My oh. holy stuff. I see some black bird horses. They sort of uh, emerge into the firelight. You recognize them as being the same ones who uh, fleed as a group last time. And uh, Rocket, as you're sort of coming to and looking at them, you're you're instinctually able to just immediately connect the dots. These are this is a this is a a, a chick, you know, like a, a growing chocobo, and uh, its parents. Queen. They all eye you warily the second you, you know, make that noise. Oh. I was just going to say, don't do quick movements or anything that could spook them. Oh, How she's about been we... laying down. She's just, uh, she, well, mm -hmm. she's kind of in nesting position. Right, kind of mm. curled up. Well, we meant for everyone. <laughs> The rest of us just sit still and let Rocket handle it. Uh, the little one, the one that you uh, recall getting shot in the side, sort of moves forward. You see that it still has the pole in its side where the arrow was. It looks like it probably fell out while they were flying. Th though it's mostly sealed up at this point, so uh, you know the side of its body is stained with a lot of red, but it's, and it's kind of moving a little slower than the others, but it seems to not be too bad. Poor little thing. Yep. Uh, and it's just sort of approaches a little more. Guys lock onto rocket. And moving just incredibly slowly and cautiously, it just sort of starts approaching. You hear the parents in the back giving off a few warning sort of chirps and trills, but and step forward as well, though uh they're keeping a somewhat wider berth and eyeing you incredibly skeptically. Ah. Mm. Do you respond? Uh. Well, it's kind of hard to communicate with animals, even if you are an animal that talks. Because... I say the best advice I could give: don't move and let it come to you. Let it study okay. you. I'm not gonna move. Yep. So, uh, the adolescent draws closer and tells, like, just a couple feet away from you. It cranes its neck down, kind of sniffs at your beak a bit, then sniffs at your head case. The second it does, it sort of jerks its head back with an involuntary sort of hissing sound and all still. And cranes its head over again to sort of sniff more like your cheek and stuff. After a moment, it just kind of brings its head back and just stares at you for a second, tilts its head to one side. And Rocket, you know, having the sort of instinctual connection with these creatures that you do, you can tell that it's sort of... It 
doesn't know what exactly to make of you. Now, on the one hand, evidently the Magitek clearly frightens it, and you can only assume this group was hounded by, uh, maybe by Devia Corp or individuals associated with them, or Magitek or something in the past, but just based on how it's reacting to the Magitek stuff. But you, at the same time, it seems to be a bit less hostile than it was before, perhaps because it wasn't quite so startled and you fought to defend it. You know, Black Chocobos, they're not dumb. They are smart birds. They can, they, they can make deductions in their head pretty quickly and easily. The only breed of Chocobo that's smarter than black ones would have to be the golden Chocobos, and they're like 11 times more rare, so... <laughs> mm. <laughs> So eventually it They've just seen magic before. As you say that it kind of tilts its head the other side with a questioning little it, it slowly blinks at you. Then it returns the Queen. And it kinda of ruffles its feathers a bit, turns around and starts making its way back towards its parents. We both kind of give you a look, and then turn and uh, the whole trio just slowly walks out of the firelight, disappearing into the darkness of the forest beyond. Well, I'm majestic so glad creatures. they're okay. Ooh. Wow. You don't see that every day. <laughs> I'm sorry for how they reacted to you, Rocket. They've seen Magitek before. I... You saw how he reacted, didn't you? I can't say I know, but... Unless... Part of me thinks he might have come from this forest, maybe. Perhaps. Maybe why they're scared is... What happened to you? That makes sense. It really does. Hmm... Where technology and magic can be a one thing, it can also be used for very wrong and terrible things. You could say that about anything else, yeah. Does this place seem familiar at all, Rocket? It was so long ago. I don't really remember that well. Go ahead and roll me just a flat 2d6. A flat 2d6? Yep. All right, with, with that five, uh, you feel just the faintest tinglings in your head, but you're not sure why. It might just be that you're familiar with forests in general. Maybe this was your home before, you know, the cyborg stuff. Maybe it wasn't. Can't tell. And black chocobos don't just appear in the black chocobo forest. It's just named that way because this is where they're the most common. Easiest place to sort of catch them for, you know, various purposes, such as, you know, breeding or harvesting feathers for phoenix downs and that kind of thing. Hmm. The way they reacted to the magic tech, though, there's hmm. a bit of connection there. Hmm. It's possible it is, the... It's possible the Foundation may have been here at some point. Or hmm. the Organization may have been here at some point. Hmm. Which anyway, they can't be operating too far away. Really? Hmm. With that in mind, who's up for next watch again? I believe it was Mika. Mm -hmm. He kind of nods after a moment. All right. Okay. Interesting experience. All right. Y'all getting back to watch? Yep. Hi. All right. Just go ahead and uh, say for purposes of this, the rest of your watch uh, goes without incident. And the uh, morning comes. And we all get the travel rest? Yep, you all get a, a travel rest, so... 50% of your max HP and MP are restored. Cool. So if you were below, or so if you were above half in any of them, you're back to full. 
Uh, but super low, so we're all good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Morning at last. Everyone get ready and do what you need to do. Then we move out once we're ready. Yes, sir. And he responds sarcastically. So <laughs> since when were you the leader? Uh, I say I'm not. Just offer the best advice I can. <laughs> Which is also the state of the obvious department. <laughs> <laughs> department of redundancy state the obvious department of departments start the best calling. advice you can give wake up in the morning start calling mm. you captain obvious <laughs> no no that's just his last name alice or obvious <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're so mean at least it rhymes <laughs> <laughs> no it doesn't that's not how rhyming works it kind of lines. No, no, way. not at no, all. It really, it really doesn't. Well, all right. Thanatos Onward. obvious would be closer to a rhyme. <laughs> Thanatos really? obvious? And anyway, I think we're moving towards the next city. Uh, yeah. Moving to Lolato or whatever the fuck, however the fuck you pronounce it. Yeah, Lolato. Yeah, that would be Lolato. Ah, freaking microphone arm. It's giving me shit. Ah, there we go. Besides, I never heard of a paladin leading. No, so I mean, you're the meat. You're I mean, the meat shield. Well, then you've obviously never studied the history of Vio of Volia. Mm, probably another thing I skipped out on. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, another 1.9 days of travel from where you currently are. But for the sake of expediency, we'll go ahead and say that the rest of your trek through the Black Chocobo Forest is uneventful. One, we scared the local wildlife and killed probably the biggest group of poachers in the forest. So, so you pass through, and the forest around you eventually gives way, and you find yourself emerging out into sort of a narrow strip of open grassland that eventually comes to uh, a large sheer cliffside that goes down into a very, very wide river. And uh, you see <laughs> off in the distance this really big bridge, very finely made, that kind of stretches across the whole length. So this is a big fucking bridge. I just hope a troll doesn't lurk underneath. <laughs> the, tro <laughs> the troll would be like a few hundred feet below you if it did. Mm. This is one of those times I wish I could actually fly. It would save so much time. <laughs> you and I, me could always just, I could always just throw you across. <sighs> Still. I would rather ask if Mika happens to know a spell. <laughs> Mika checks her head. No, I don't know a flying spell. I'm sorry. So disappointed. Mm. And she kind of looks <laughs> down and droops. Aww. Aww. Nice work, me. Hey, hey, well, hey. Hey. Hey, well. the heart and you're too glad. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Anyways. I I, I think I would rather uh, stick with you than fly, though. <laughs> nice recovery. Never seeing that. Oh. Well, I'm. A, I always feel like I'm flying high when I'm with you. Look at the bright side, Mika. Meanwhile, back in Maras. Meanwhile, back in Maras, Ulaska suddenly looks up. You're going too hard, little little suitor. Stop! Stop! Me <laughs> <laughs> is trying to cheer her up. <laughs> <Did> you <do> that? <laughs> You're going I'm too. Gonna... You're going too hard, little suitor. Stop! Stop! <laughs> uh -oh. I'm just gonna be quiet now and maybe resist the urge to jump off a bridge. We're just, we're just going to have Luska occasionally giving commentary on your love life over this campaign. Is she secretly decided. psychic? <laughs> no, but uh, it's, for a, it's, it's, for, it's for a joke. It's for a joke. It's for a joke. It's exactly for a joke. So. Yep. Like, like she's reading the chronicles of your adventures after they've all been cataloged, and she's like, "You're going too hard, little suitor. Stop, stop." <laughs> See, oh my! It's so less I... flirting at this point, more trying. I uh, upset her, trying not to upset her, making it worse. So I'm, now I'm just want to hide and so, die. Thanatos comes up behind both of them and just puts a hand on each of their shoulders. So, shall we get going? Yes, that's please. Okay, bye. <laughs> so, Mika, mm -hmm. have you ever? Have you ever traveled this far to a place before? No, this is my first time outside of Marasu, remember? Hmm. Aside from some work in the foothills outside of the city, I never left my island before. This is all mm. new to me, and 
He sort of slowly spins in place. I didn't know what it was like to see land in every direction. Mm. A lot of people are apparently enthralled by ocean views, me. <laughs> land view, that's where it's at. I suppose you would be if you'd never seen it before. Right? I grew up in the forest like that one back there. So it's, I'm more used, I'm more enthralled by the ocean. Kind of weird that way. Yeah, with over a month in Marasu, I'm kind of sick of the ocean. To be fair, we never saw much of the ocean. It was always buildings, buildings, cultist buildings. And Ew. and ter ugly, terrifying elders monstrosities. Mm. Speaking of, does anyone know what kind of city Loloto is? Well, looking across the bridge, you can see that Loloto is a, a prime example of traditional Tarifelian architecture, just blown up in scale a bit. As I explained back in Paratin, Tarifel architecture is very earthy and very organic in shape. A lot of the buildings are sort of round and made of very natural materials, so you know, like manipulated wood instead of wooden planks or anything. Very little in the way of stone. So it kind of looks like this... Every building has a sort of oblong shape. It's vaguely like an egg with sort of a more expanded base, if you'll catch my drift for the basic shape. Like, it's wide at the base, sort of narrows down and then swells up a bit and then comes to a point at the top, and it's all very wood and earthy and whatnot. And that's kind of the basic look of Loloto, so it looks like just a bunch of tall, gnarled wooden spires in the distance that sort of, at least for the bigger buildings towards the center, and a lot of smaller ones making up residences and homes and the like. It's a very large city compared to Paroton, and even large compared to Marasu. I was also referring to like what kind of city is in, what's his trade, what is his export, ah, what well, is it uh, about, ah, the well, culture there. Ah, well, uh, in this case you would need to make a lore history check. Oh, he doesn't know, that's why she was asking other people. <laughs> well, you can roll. Mika will roll. want to roll? But while we do cross this bridge... <laughs> Mika, Mika, Mika rolled a critical failure, so uh, she's actually just as oblivious about this city as anyone else. Hmm. The egghead of the group gets a critical fail. Yeah, that's great. Even with her impressive Whoa. plus seven to lore. Jesus. Ouch. There's nothing wrong with being a naked. Well, while we do end up in this place... Rocket critical you. success! Okay. <laughs> All right. What the fuck? Okay. Suddenly, the Joker Rocket Bow remember. knows more than the egghead. Well, Suddenly, Rocket remembers everything. Well, this actually <laughs> makes sense. This actually makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, Rocket... You actually know a fair amount about this city because the merchant you traveled with for a long while after escaping Devia Corp came from here. This was his home city. Oh, yeah. I've been here before. Well, you well you've well you've, well, you've never been here, but you've well, heard of a, a lot about it because you I like know to reminisce. Place. Yeah. So what you know about Lalato is primarily it serves as a larger sort of a it's a larger port. And where Porton is sort of the official gateway city for incomers, like for people who are who are returning from trips or who have a lot of big business to do, they usually come to Lolito. And its central location makes it sort of a nice trading hub for a lot of the rest of the administration of La Pina, you know, the, the home of the Tarafel. So it gets a lot of traffic in and out as this big trading hub. Its primary export is in large part a lot of stone from the sheer cliffside it rests next to. But there are also mines beneath it, so it gets a lot of jewels and stuff. And, of course, with the river, the, the several rivers flowing through the area, it has a lot of farmland. So it also produces a crap load of food. So its primary exports are stone for construction, wood from the nearby Black Chocobo Forest, gems from the mines, and food from the, from the fields. So it's a bit of a jack-of-all-trades, really. Pretty much. It's just a massive trade and resource hub, spending stuff pretty much freaking everywhere. I don't know what that guy was going on about. This is a good place to make money. Hmm. Well, maybe he just couldn't keep hold of a job for more than five minutes. Yeah, that would definitely oh. be a problem in the city. Without a well-rounded list of skills, finding work here would actually be difficult because all the good jobs uh, are already taken. Anything someone like you know, like a common street rat could actually get would pay very poorly, and work environments would actually probably be less than ideal. As big of a as big of a city as it is, and as great as it is for the savvy merchant, it's not necessarily the best place for people with uh without a good craft skill. Hmm. 
Before um, we enter this place, Thanatos, don't do any fancy acrobatic stuff. We don't want to repeat at the docks. Thank you. Yeah, I think I'm good for a swim. Mm. Because I think if you take a dive down there, it'd be very unpleasant. Yeah, no shit. Well, fortunately, I have a rope to carry him out. <laughs> I mean, he just, Thanatos just starts walking across the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, again, it's a long bridge, so the path takes you about 20 minutes. And as you're going, you already see there are a lot of people on this bridge. A lot of people kind of have set up like sort of bridge side market stalls. Uh, there are a bunch of people who are just going to and from, walking through by the looks of it. Just a lot of people in general just going about their day doing various things. And you actually see one guy with a sort of a, a makeshift sort of pen set off to one side of the bridge with a couple of what looks to be domesticated black chocobos kind of set up and wandering around nomming on Geisha Greens. He's, and, and most of these folk are Tarofel. You're very much in the heart of where the vast majority of the population are the potato people, so. Potato. <laughs> It's a common nickname in the Final Fantasy community for the squat little guys. They're, they they vaguely resemble potatoes, so. Oh boy. Vaguely. Does seem like a charming place to be. Yep. And uh, and the one who's running the the little pen with the, uh, you know, domesticated black chocobos sort of, he looks over towards your group as you're passing, and his eyes just lock on the rock. It just <laughs> tilts his head to one side. And he's kind of a, a he's got kind of a tan face going and kind of a, just a cropped he head of a yellowish hair that comes to a nice little point directly overhead. He sort of wanders over, just staring at Rocket curiously. What? Hi. What? You. Wow. He kind of looks back to his pen, looks back at you. Looks back at his pen and looks at you one more time and then says, The hell? Yeah, I can talk. Yeah, she gets that a lot. You, you can just... tell he's trying to find his words. You can tell. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you just the center of attention? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Always I mean, I, I, making friends. Yeah, yeah, are, I mean, we gonna get, are we going to get this kind of interaction every time we come to a new city? Well, she is a talking cyborg chocobo who has the intelligence of a uh, adult human, Elvan, whatever. So, gold is nice, but we have a cyborg chocobo that can talk. That's even rarer, in my opinion. And I think we broke this fellow here. He sort of suddenly, at, as soon Don't as he's worry, mentioned, he's harmless. Yeah, as soon as, as soon as you mention him, he straightens himself up, adjusts his sort of fairly nice jacket. He's wearing decent clothes, pretty nice. Adjusts himself a bit. Sort of stands a bit and says, Uh, is the bird for sale, perchance? No. 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 <laughs> she Sorry. is a sapient being, and we don't deal in slavery. Oh. He sags. <sighs> All right. Turns also, around. she's... Sorry, good sir, but she's with us. Yeah, it's fine. And he dejectedly goes back to his stall. The birds, the, the, the birds he has in there kind of look up, tilt their heads as well. They don't seem to be as taken aback by Rocket's unusual features as uh, the wild ones were, and so they just kind of happily quee at her and just Make friends wherever you go. <laughs> you do have some beautiful chocobos already, though, it seems like. Well, yeah, I, I do. But more the merrier, you know? <laughs> mm. I take it you this... get them from the forest back there? Yes, through strictly legal means, of course. Of course. Yeah, we met some who were doing this so by illegal means. Oh, you encountered the poacher group. Did you... Did they attack you? Yeah. Yeah, they won't be doing that again. Oh! Well, good for you. Nice, they were causing a trouble for all of us honest merchants of the trade. Thank you for that. No problem. Oh, you're welcome. Mind if I ask you a question? Uh, sure. Okay, uh, add character for one sec. Uh, Talon, what was that leader? He was a what? An Elvon. Oh, no, 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 the leader. The, the, the Banga. Uh, the, the leader was a Banga, a tall, sort of hunched over lizard guy. 
You okay. said you've been having trouble with those poachers. Yeah, for the last few weeks. The leader was a bonga. Do you know anything about him? Afraid not, no. You've just kind of arrived without any th fanfare or anything, went to the forest, and next thing we knew, we were f it was becoming harder and harder to find chocobos because they were often being killed and their stuff harvested for sale in black markets. I, t I, re I reach into my pocket and bring out the cloth again. You know, you, does this symbol mean anything to you? He sort of squints at it for a moment. No, can't say it does. I'm sorry. All right. Thank you. No problem. Have a nice day. Oh, you too. And, uh, good day to you. He sort of, if he had a hat, he'd be tipping it at Rocket, and he'd just kind of staring after you guys as you head into the city proper with the sort of longing look like, oh, if only. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> Quite the pleasant fellow. <laughs> Not that we could ever sell our Rocket. Although... I did there's, like he was a bit needy to walk it, though. There's a curiosity. How much could we get for a cyborg choker? No. Yeah, don't even go there. Don't. Don't even think it, was a, it was a choke. Come on. Um, Mika come smacks on. you in the back of the head. Ow. Me gives Mika a thumbs up. <laughs> Great. No, yeah, yeah, Mika, yeah, Mika. I can neuter you right here and now. Oh. Wait, what was that? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't hear it. What was it? You do realize I can neuter you right here and now. <laughs> and Thanatos just slowly starts uh, increasing speed. <laughs> That's so. I'm going to say we're all in agreement. Mm. Calm down. Lock it. Calm down. You've had your fun. <laughs> I feel like Thanatos is becoming the punching bag of the group. <laughs> I mean, he talks his way into these situations a lot of the time. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so you couldn't find work. Or he dives right into, into them. The ocean. That's why on the TV show's page you are the Lancer, the foil of everyone. <laughs> anyway, yeah, the Han Solo type of the group. So, shall we press on? Dude, what are you doing? I don't know you talked to a dwarf, honestly. So, <laughs> what are you doing in the city, people? What can we see in terms of establishment shops and all that? Uh, well, within oh. look, well within Loloto, it will pretty much have the full assortment of all types of shops you could hope to have from a big city. Ah, oh, I wonder if I could start. Is it? I'm going to talk to to myself, or maybe in Lee's mind. I wonder if I can start playing aspects of my plan into motion here. We should plan. get a cart. A uh, cart? You know, like a wagon we can ride in? Why? Because bird. <laughs> because bird. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me get this straight. Out of character, but you want us to turn Rocket into a literal pack horse? What? I mean, she is really strong. She is. If you can well, get... Isn't that, that a little... Uh, if you can't get a car, we'll be in the back and she'll be able to... Pull it. Yeah. I mean, again, isn't that a little degrading? Mm. I mean, you... No, and she doesn't give a shit. <laughs> okay. As long as it doesn't offend you, Rocket. Hey, it'd be easier to get away. Yeah, Either right. way, maybe we can talk about we'll that tomorrow. A very good point. <laughs> all right, where does, where does one get a wagon around here? Well, we can sort that later. For now, I in favor of us having a look around the place visiting some establishments and then finding an inn to sleep for the night and seeing what's going on around the city. Alright. Your logic seems logical. I well, have a few things I want to shop for, maybe. Hmm. I know someone needs an armor. Mika? Sheep Would sort you of... like... Oh, uh... Would you like to... Sheep sort of looks down at her robe and says... I mean, it would probably help. <laughs> mm. I trust. Even if it's something light to wear under the robes. Of course. Mm. Also, sure on that note, Alicia, while you're shopping with Mika for armor, you need a better staff. Yeah. As much as I like this old thing, 
it does tend to fail now and then. Again, and it, I it, I think if we I think for that we'll probably have to kind of wait to the Academy but, City because I doubt there's anybody here like who knows magic stuff. We can always say. look. Well, I will have even a if it's just a. I will have a look around, but I feel like I find what I need at the Academy. So you're looking for an armor shop? Mm-hmm. Me too. You uh, suit up, shall we? If you guys are going to go and help me could do that, I'm going to go do some business for myself for the time being. Mm-hmm. All right. See you later, Nee. All right, so you're getting... I am also going to go off on my own. Okay, so you're getting Tier 2 armor for mm -hmm. Mika? Mm-hmm. Right, for Before we do... You, what are you doing? Hmm, shopping for a cart. All right. Go ahead. Uh, we'll go ahead and say that a cart that can hold, a, you know, the, you know, let's say about six people at a max capacity uh, would run you about 700 gil. That's not too bad. I mean, considering Ooh. each of us got 2,000 less. In and, of course, an extra hundred and... Also, before I three. go, Mika, out of just random curiosity I'm not thinking of, what's your favorite color? Um... She sort of looks down at herself and said, I'd have to say red. Red. Ooh. Well, that she works. Mine's blue. Well, obviously. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tier two ar so let's just take care of the armor situation for Mika real quick. Uh, tier two armor is four hundred and fifty gil, and Alistair is paying that expense. Because yeah, I, I don't mind. Because I guess Mika doesn't have any. She wasn't given well, two thousand gil for saving the city. Right now, she's serving at one hundred forty-eight. Uh, <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's why I was going to ask this when we do get some armor. So should I pay for it, or do you want to pay for it, Nee? Well, I I'm not with you guys. Yeah, she fucked oh. off. Yeah, knee, yeah, knee's gone. Get... Those standards. It's, 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 you, it's Mika and Alicia that are doing the shopping for that. Don't have to be you, Alicia. Yep, I do it then. All right, all right. So go ahead wonder it is. So, uh, so Mika expresses that she's fine with light or medium armor. Hmm. Huh. Which one would be better suited for her? Light armor mm, grants like more protection against magic attacks, and medium armor is balanced. Hmm. I say maybe medium, balance-wise. All right. Because it's not all the attacks that hit her are magic. I mean, arrow does not count. So medium, I say. All right, so gets medium armor. That's 450 out of your pocket. Make sure to get that. I'm Alice doing in. it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And I'll go ahead and uh, pick out a property for her in my own time. Cool. Mm. Let's do the maths. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Done. So, what is Nee up to? Nee, for her part, unknown to all of you, is looking for a shop that might sell dresses. Right. So, oh. should we deafen ourselves? And only oh you my. I don't think you need to. You just don't know in character. Okay. Unless, unless uh, the check. otherwise. I mean, the way I see it, uh, if you want to do something that's specific to your character and you want everyone else to deafen themselves for it, you do you have the capacity to request that. Uh, mm -hmm. well, they know now, don't they? But... Yeah. I'd say we already know what you're doing, so it's kind of pointless. I don't think this isn't necessarily plot centric. This is just something that they can... I'm fine with them knowing our character, just don't react to it in character. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm right. hungry. <laughs> well, we'll get to Is that in character or out of character? <laughs> yes. Well, yes. <laughs> well we're going to need to find you some lovely greens for you to eat. In real life, silly. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gotten a chance to eat yet. I got snapped up right out of bed. <laughs> Sorry. All right. All right. Well, all right. So, so. sleeping in. <laughs> okay, so, Neothil. Uh, after doing some asking around, you eventually managed to locate a, a nice place, sort of a, on one of the larger streets that kind of has a slightly more open front design where, like, all of these buildings have these sort of bulbous, spiry shapes. This one, it's no different, but it's a bit wider than the other, so it looks a little distorted. And the front of it has these two large sort of squares cut out of the wood that's been gnarled to make the shape. And, uh serve a sort of display windows where you see a bunch of, uh, it's primarily, of course, in Tarofel sizes. You see a bunch of, uh, 
you know, various forms of formal attire and nice clothes in general. It's just a very nice clothing store in general. Do they have examples of non-Tarafel? Uh, I've got a couple. I got a couple for humans and one or two for Elvon, but not a whole lot. Hmm. Well, something to look at anyway. I also see if there's something in the price range. But, yeah. right. You heading in? He goes in. Right. Yep. All right, you head inside and you look around for a bit, and uh, before overly long, you spot someone off to one side. Um, a Tarafel lady with uh, red hair kind of putting the pigtails and a nice clothes of her own. And she's currently, uh, looks like she's actually adjusting one such garment on a mannequin. I almost said ponykin. Me, <laughs> <laughs> slightly nervous, because this, this is a first. Um, kind of clears her throat. <clears> throat> The lady looks over at you, sort of smiles. Oh, hello! Uh, give me just a moment. Here, Annette. She turns back to uh, the thing, makes a few final adjustments, and then looks back to you. So, hello, welcome. What can I do for you? Uh, uh, hi, uh, I'm me, and, um, well, I'm looking for a gift, actually, for a friend? She gets a sort of coy look on her face. Sure you are. Anyway, uh... The blush gives it all away. You wouldn't happen to have anything in the color red for, uh, in Mithra sizes, would you? She, uh, pauses for a second, sort of taps her chin in a sort of exaggerated manner. Hmm... Uh, not immediately on hand. The myths are a little more challenging than some of the others to make dresses for. Not just because, you know, the tailors, you have to take those into consideration and make more shapes, and they don't usually uh, come this far in most of the time. Either they go right through, or they just stick in Puritan, so... We're actually uh, heading to uh, Academy City. That's why. Ooh, it's a lovely place. I've made a few deliveries there before. Yeah, kind of, uh, I have a plan to surprise her with this when we get there, along with a few other bits, maybe. I don't know. I'm new at this. <laughs> I can tell. But don't oh. worry, darling, just do whatever feels natural. Now then! She turns and sort of, uh, shuffles a little bit. Do you happen to have any idea how large your, this, friend, she does quotation marks, is? A general... Uh, Mika is definitely shorter than Neothil by a good several inches. Uh, but aside from that, she's, you know, kind of trim, in good shape. Not necessarily muscular or s s precisely big or anything, but she's well-shaped. I'll give her that. I communicate that. <laughs> All right. You sort of, you sort of go through conveying the, the what you recall of Mika's overall physique and shape and like the general size of her tail and like that because that's something that has to be taken into consideration when coming up with the garments and uh after a little bit um the lady nods her head she introduces herself as papira by the way papira yeah, papira go ahead and just uh, type that in chat papira the, she makes a few notes as you're talking, just some glasses on her head. See, I see. Hmm. All right. You sort of uh, pass the notebook aside. All right, well, uh, I don't have anything quite like that right now, but I can make something. I imagine that would be more expensive. It will be, yes. Not by a whole lot, but it will be more expensive, I. What are we looking at? Well, for a regular dress, pre-made, sort of generalized, it would usually be around 400 gil. For a custom order, it will be 600, half paid up front for a custom order. I can do that. Very well. On that note, uh, maybe something a little simpler, I'm not saying bother for myself, but something in blue as well. well Elven size, well, me well, well, size. Well, lucky for you, I do have one or two in Elvon sizes that I think might fit. 
All right, can I have a look? Sure. And she shows you to a few, and, you know, there's, like, one that's purple, one that's blue, one that's more of, like, a foresty green, one that's kind of a mishmash of a bunch of colors that work real nicely together. She's more interested in the blue. All right. Uh, yeah, it's kind of this general deeper ocean blue with some more pale sky blues. The sky blues sort of have a bit more like that sort of silky, reflecty appearance, whereas the darker blues are a bit less reflecty. So it creates a sort of a contrast where the brighter parts of the body of the dress catch the light more than the darker ones. So it's eye-catching in that sense. Huh. Can I try it? You go through that steps, and it, it fits. Little snug around the shoulders, but that's nothing that a little bit of stretching won't fix. She's fine on that. She's mostly just looking for whatever, she, whatever little something to get for herself. She's mostly focused on Mika. Anyway. All right. All right. I think that will do for me. Mika's the focus anyway. All right. So it'll be 300 now for uh, starting uh, the custom order for Mika. 400 for uh, yours. And uh, you'll need to come back and actually pick up Mika's dress at some point. So... 700 in all currently. Yep, and it'll add up to 1,000 when you come back to pay the second half of the custom order. Alright. I'll try to just subtract all of that now. If you want. If you want. Yeah. I'd say that 1,000 in all? Yep. Hmm. Alright. I think, uh, do you have a time frame for when it'll be done? I'm within the next one to three weeks. One to three weeks. How long is the journey from here to Animo? The journey from here to Animo? Uh, well, yeah. it's going to be kind of roundabout. You have to come down here. And that's going to be at about a six-day trip to take this bridge. And then you'll have to spend another about four and a half, five days to get to the base of the Mages Mountains. And then because you're going to be going up mountains, like even with a trail, your, slow, your path is going to be slowed down. That's going to be another two days of just trekking up the mountainside before you finally reach the so Academy City. So two weeks, two weeks there. So it'll be one to three weeks to make. So I can find a way to convince the pipe to stay in the city for a week. Uh, we'll only earn some deal. Well, I'm going to just to see if we can find some side quests, I guess. Hmm. All right. Uh, okay, I'll think of something with that. I'm trying to keep that secret. Um. Having feelings for someone is complicated. And Papyrus seems to agree with that wholeheartedly. So we're well, going to be stuck here for a week while you <laughs> get me addressed. Uh, right. A week. Yep, a week. What the hell are we going to do here for a week? Wow. Hey, it's Final Fantasy. Have you ever heard of side quests? <laughs> I'm sure there'll be someone who has like like cat stuck in a tree or little Jimmy's in a well. Go save them, I'll give you some gill. <laughs> True, we're earning some stuff along the side, maybe. But it looks um. like we're not gonna get to the academy anytime soon. Well, it's not going anywhere. Uh, don't don't take that shut up. don't listen to me saying that, Brian. Shush. Yeah, we uh, get there we get there and it's all destroyed because we took a week it's just for you to a get a massive address. crystal of amber that shot out through hey, a mountain. What happened? <laughs> we stayed we stayed in the one town too long because Ni nee wanted to have a nice dress moment with Mika. Sad elven noises. Sad elven noises. I'm a baby girl. Oh Jeez, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I will frickin' punch you through this Oh, moment. man, that will break Me out. Me pounce so at the, the voice in our head. <laughs> <laughs> this place was like a... Anyway, Pipiri, thank you for everything. Uh, I'll be back to check on in a week, see if it's had any progress. Okie dokie. I take it, I have mine with me now. Yeah, you have yours. Mm. I can keep that hidden in the pack. I have yeah. but one question. How many days away are we from the academy? Oh, he, he just went through that. We, just, about we literally just went through that darkness. It's about two weeks. Uh, so, anyway, with thanks and equal part shitting herself and giddy at 
her plans slowly come to fruition. She is going to leave and go and see if we can find the others. All right. You find them easily enough. You kind of arrange for a meeting point in sort of a, a city plaza. Kind of meet up, finding each other easily enough amidst the crowds because there's not that hard to locate the big black cyborg chocobo that is catching fucking everyone's eye. Hey guys, uh, did you get the armor? Yeah, yes. Yep, Mika kind of. Hey, okay, you yep, want to show? Yep, Mika steps forward and kind of does a little twirl, and uh, she's she's wearing she's still wearing her robe over it, but the armor she's now wearing is sort of a sort of thick padded leather with some studs on it that's sort of bleached to match the color of the rest of her clothes. Does a little spin, shows it off a bit. It's a little limiting in the movement department, but uh, I like it. <laughs> oh. I guess it confirms it. You're an adventurer now. <laughs> eh, yeah. If you're going to uh, be an adventurer, you need to look apart and, of course, have durable armor. Thanatos isn't here, is he? He's off somewhere. Mm -hmm. As his rocket. I mean, yeah. are, are, Which are, is... are you guys? <laughs> where are you two? Well, I mean, Rocket never really specified where, where she was going, and I just. She was off getting that cart, wasn't she? Well, yeah, yeah there's that. Which might as well jump to you because. Luminous is going to get some food. She'll be back shortly. All right. So Rocket's currently off getting a car. Where's Thanatos? Is there like a like maybe a, a bar? A, yeah, yeah. Let's just uh, go with a bar. All right. Yeah, sure. You find a pub easily enough. Good old British pub. Good old British pub. I walk up, I walk up to the bar, and I'm guessing there's a bartender. Yep, uh, it's pretty crowded inside. A lot of people going about the days. It seems to be like lunch rush, so not everyone here is a uh, taking alcohol. They're just grabbing food and chowing down, and relaxing before they have to go back to work. By the looks of it, person behind the counter, uh, another Tarafel. Pretty much everyone in the city is. Look up as you approach, gives a big grin. Hello. Don't see very many humans in this city. What can I do for you? I'm in the market for a drink and information, if you wouldn't mind. All right, I can definitely get you the drink. What are you looking for? Whiskey. All right. So that's about, and after a moment, he provides you a glass of whiskey. Funny guilt. I just hand him the gill. Thank you. And you say you're looking for information? Yeah. My friends and I ran into some poachers out in the Black Chocobo Forest. Oh. There was a... The leader was a bongo. And he was carrying this symbol. I put the cloth out on the bar. Oh. I recognize the symbol. Don't know what the hell it is, but I... I actually recognize it, yeah. I think the bong in question actually came in here once before we started doing the poaching thing. Any idea what his name is? Yeah, I mean, there were a few others, and I think one of them said his name was Nagul. Did he, did he say where he came from or what he was doing here? If he did, I'm afraid I didn't overhear it. I'm not in the business of eavesdropping on my own customers. It's rude, you know. Fair enough. Just bought drinks, got a room for the night, and then left with his friends in the morning. I say so of him. And the ruckus out in the fort took him before it started. Have you noticed anybody else waving this symbol around? Nope. Not one. Hmm. Thanks for the drink and the info. You're welcome. I hey. just I take the shot and chuck it down in one in one go. Impressive. I can't listen. <laughs> you can't eh, this is nothing. Thank you. I can. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Thanatos again nods his head and thanks and walks out. Alright. Lumina, you back yet? I'm just checking on that. Okay. 
Uh, that is a negative. She is probably eating a sandwich. Mm. Are you coming back? There we go. Sandwich. Anyway. <clears throat> oh, this now tells you you're nesting with us, while Rocket is still off getting a cut. Shall we meet up with him? Well, I guess he can yeah, find yeah, you guys yeah, yeah, in the yeah, central yeah, plaza. Yeah, let's go ahead and say that Thanatos was like regrouping with everyone else at the same time Neathel was. Okay. Oh, uh, just after, I guess. Yep, Thanatos! Right. Timing. Hey. Did you find what you were looking for, Nee? I didn't find anything. I was just browsing. She says, not so convincingly. <laughs> Clearly, um, again, bricking it. <laughs> hmm. Thanatos just gives this ever so slight. Smirk. Well, you don't know what I've been doing. No, but he knows you're up to something. Yeah. Actually, Neathel, roll me an acting check. The rest of you, roll oh, awareness checks to I, see I, through. I already said it's terrible. <laughs> Wait, but, you're in the acting. Okay. I already said it was absolutely terrible, though. I haven't got. I mean, acting is zero, so that does fit. But yeah, Fair just enough. roll right. two d six. So, so, for her. so, so, so everyone else would be rolling awareness to see if they see through her bullshit. Well, I already know. Okay. I have thinly failed bullshit. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not very. Mm. Yeah, mm. everyone sees through Nii's thinly veiled bullshit. <laughs> As was intended. <laughs> Mika slowly tilts her head to one side. <laughs> I'll hear you sound that. <laughs> tail kind of, say anything? The, the tip of her tail kind of twitches from side to side a little bit. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, I'm perfectly fine. Just browsing. Mm. Why? How are you? She steps forward a little bit, her eyes narrowing. Her face is turning all red. Doesn't seem right. Uh, isn't it always? No, usually it's rather pink. Oh, pink? You are pink. Not pink. <laughs> <laughs> she sort of reaches up and puts the back of her hand against you for it as a feeling for a fever. <laughs> <laughs> like she's just starting to fuss over you, <laughs> trying to figure out what's wrong. Mika, I'm fine. Speaking of finding stuff, from the smell of your breath, you found the bar there, Anatos. Yeah, just a quick drink and some questions. Mm hmm. You found your found any answers you're looking for? A bit. Hmm. Good. It, it, speaking of bars, is it a bar that has rooms? Hey, you're back. Yeah, I'm back with the strawberry and peach fruit salad that smells like heaven. Nice. <laughs> Did you already subtract the money for the carriage, by the way? Yeah. Okay. Then we can say that nice. at about this point, Rocket, sort of, uh, you come up with the already hitched to the Rocket, just kind of carrying it behind you up to the rest of the group. Sort of everyone, the civilian population is kind of walking around like, what the hell? Eventually I'll, you... I'll thank the gods. <laughs> <laughs> and you see, like, the rest Whoa. of the group is kind of gathered around in the plaza. Next to, like, a big fountain or something, just chatting to each other, and you pull up. Nice cart. <laughs> I'm afraid we probably won't be able to use it for a little while, though. And why is that? Oh, I I don't know. I mean, the Academy City's not going anywhere. I was thinking we could earn some gill, maybe see if we can find some work for the next week, maybe longer. Thanatos slowly raises an eyebrow. Hey, it's not like you could say no to more gill in, in shopping and we could use it in Academy City. Perhaps. It's a good idea! <laughs> <laughs> alright, alright. Now just calm down, Nee. Mika is tell talking about arms crossed. Mika tilts her head the other way, and her tail starts swishing a bit more actively. You were probably in almost as big a hurry as me to get to the Academy City, but now you want to wait? Make any sense? Are you, are you sure you're alright? Do you have a fever or something? Again, she starts feeling it in your face. 
Minka, I don't have a fever. Please stop. <gasps> I and I know I was in a rush. I want to get that too. There's a lot of answers, but you know, there's some things going on here that we can wait for. Please, thank you. How long are you thinking of waiting? I just told you a week, maybe a little longer. Probably a week. I hope. A week. What the hell are we supposed to do around here for a week? Mika cast Detect Magic on Neothel. <laughs> she, she, she pulls. Yep, yep, she, yep, she, yep, she pulls out her book, puts her hand on it, and a little blue pulse comes out, washes over Neothel. <sighs> he is getting increasingly indignant. <laughs> Mika, f I told you I am fine. Please. I'm just making sure because this doesn't make any sense. It the will book. tell me about it. It, it will make perfect sense in not a week because it'll make sense one day. <laughs> I'm starting to think. Make that. a negotiation check. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh no. And Mika is going to make a finesse check to <laughs> the other mm -hmm. two goals for it. Oh. Uh, God damn it. Uh, negotiation Stop. zero. Oh, oh dear. Okay. Nope. <laughs> yep, yep, that's a three against her twelve. Oh. Mika remains unconvinced. <laughs> oh dear. I'm starting yeah. to think it's fate that we're never going to make it back. <laughs> it's not fate, trust me. Though mm. this is most certainly fate. This is just my luck. Mm. Um. Disgruntled knee noises. <laughs> He just keeps well, staring at you for a few minutes. Her eyes calculating at a million miles per second. <laughs> she's doing the Sherlock mind pass thing. Well, she, she's, she, she's, 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 she's doing the Twilight analytical look. <laughs> kind of eye super narrowed, duck face, ch fist rubbing at her chin a bit. Sort of leaned forward, tail swishing back and forth. Finally, she gives off an exasperated sigh and a heavy shrug. Uh, fine, have it your way. I promise it will make sense. At some point, I don't want to say when, and can we please leave it at that? Because otherwise, I'm probably going to burn up. Hmm. Well, with that... <laughs> she kind of with... just cuffs at you and spins around. Well, with that little deal, how about we discuss this later and find some place to stay? Exactly what I was gonna say. Point job, and I'm just going to hide anywhere. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's put this embarrassing slash adorable behind us. I'm not adorable. <laughs> Mika looks back at you for a second, you opens do. her mouth to say something, closes her mouth, and looks away again. Aww. All right. <laughs> so. All right. So, how about we go find an inn and see? We can get some rooms. Mm. Sounds like a wonderful idea. All right. Yeah, well, yeah. Stanislaus lead them back to the pub he he went to. Yeah, but on the way. Uh oh. Stanislaus <laughs> kind of grabs me by the shoulder and slowly <sighs> inches them away from the party out of earshot. Uh. Am I being kidnapped? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> so. Call the please. police. What are you plotting? FBI, open up. <laughs> what was that? I was like, so, Nee, what are you plotting? I'm not plotting anything. Really? Because it seems to me that you are plotting something. It's not a plot, it's a plan. Plotting uh -huh. would, would imply ill intent. This is really not. Ah, hmm. oh, so it's something nice. Uh, just shut up. Oh, come on. You can tell me. <laughs> How about I tell you if you tell me what's the deal with that symbol? Oof. Oh. F. Uh, that's just <laughs> not fair. <laughs> Technically, Life isn't... It is. you're sharing secret and important information between each other. 
Life isn't fair. Take it or leave it. Okay. And of course, I'll say this out of character because you're doing your little. He lets go of her shoulder and just pats her. You just That's better what hope. I thought. Uh, you just better hope this works out. Mika looks quite annoyed. Oh, I need a drink. Okay. So, Mika, what's the. What are you going to study when we do eventually get to the academy? Well, I mean, I'm an apprentice white mage, so probably going to keep working on my white magic. Nice. As for me, I might invest in more defensive spells. You did tell me you'd tell me more about the Academy City, didn't you? Yes. Well, how about you tell me all about it once we're situated? Definitely. Okay. I was going to say stuff on the boat, but let's just say I'm, I'm a bit wary of the sea. I don't blame you. Alright. So, uh, you eventually find the inn and tavern easily enough. You head inside, and you know a lot of people look up just to, because you know of the thunk thunk of rockets, giant feet. And sort of look up, uh, give you all a look. Barkeeper looks up, jerks back. What the? What? What? What's with the choke about? Calm down, calm down. She means you no harm. I swear. We're just looking for a place to stay the night, or maybe a few nights, should I say. Would it be possible you have enough room in this fine establishment of yours? Yes, but all for a chocobo. Ah, hmm. Does this Is mean Rocket's going to be stuck outside again? I mean, you give us shelter at least. and, a, and... Mika, Mika kind of steps forward and sort of leans towards him a bit. Look, can you just make an exception this once? She's real nice and she's clean, and she's already been on the road for like a week. She's had a rough time, just cut her some slack, okay? Gonna make a negotiation check. Mm -hmm. Use those cute cat girl charms. Does it work? Well, let's find out. He needs to roll finesse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yay! Uh, well, he slowly tilts his head to the side and then. Oh, oh, all right, fine. But only one night, and if she causes any trouble, she's out on the street. Mika, Thank you. Mika grins. Yeah, but she said thanks. She comes back to the group. So, shall we? Oh, I'm here, I'm just eating. Thank you, Mika. <laughs> all right. We're never going to be able to keep anything from you, are we? And he says with some amusement. All right. <laughs> All right, so uh, it's getting on towards late evening. Uh, anything else you guys want to do before you turn in for the night? Knees just kind of uh, seems to have a lot on her mind. Is all equally beat root still and kind of shuffling awkwardly. All right. Oh. Uh, I was gonna keeping to herself for the most part. Right. Talk of Mika. All right. Well, we won't go super in depth into that. We're going to say you spend a. Pretty much the last of the hmm. remaining daylight hours regaling her with information about the Academy City, so. Yep. Though so she's now well informed about it, or at the very least mm -hmm. informed about it from a student's perspective. Hmm. She's quite excited and, and enthralled at the prospects. Hmm. And I mentioned a bit more about. Fina? Yeah, Fina. Remember. Mika doesn't really ask a whole lot about that at the moment, seeming. For the time being, mm. more interested in the city itself, so. Hmm. About that, and uh, anyone else have anything else they want to take care of before uh, we end this in-game day? Uh, I think we're good. All right. In that case, mm -hmm. the night passes without incident, since you all don't have to pay for room because of Nia Thil's uh, game-breaking ability. On the months. Anyways, um, morning comes, and uh, after a little bit, um, Rocket is the first one to awaken. Right? So you wake up, and you find that the sun is only just coming up on the horizon. This guy's awake, so I'm awake. Okay. 
Nope. <laughs> I just kind of not entirely sure what exactly to do for the time being. You just head back down into the common room. Emerging into it, you see that there aren't necessarily a, a whole lot of people out there right now. Uh, you see the bartender isn't even behind the bar at the moment. You just see a couple people sipping at small drinks. You assume the barkeep is probably in the back working in the kitchens or something, so. So, mm -hmm. look around for a bit. Just ruffle your feathers a bit. And then suddenly a voice speaks up from uh, from your right, sort of towards the back of the room. <laughs> Rocket? You turn to look. Huh? You turn to look, and you see towards the back, seated at one of the tables, a little taru fell man with sort of a, a wide-brimmed straw hat, dressed in modest but not as great as you remember them clothes. He looks back at you with these big green eyes, mouth hanging open in shock, and he stands up from his seat to look at you, and uh, you recognize him as Inata. The, Inata! Yep, the taru fell merchant who took you in when you, you escaped Divi Corey. He also grins and sort of sprints from around the table right up to you and just leaps at you, throwing his arms around your neck. Oh, thank goodness! Oh, thank the gods! I thought That's you were dead! Right. Those people are no joke. No kidding. What, what, what happened to you? I, I thought you were dead. You just disappeared and... I, was, I couldn't find you guys. I sort of pops back down from your neck and just smiles up at you, sort of eyes shimmering with tears of joy. <sighs> I have plenty of time to talk about it, I bet. I'm staying here for a few days. I, 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 come, sit down, sit down, sit down. Um, we can talk about this and catch up and... <laughs> he lunges forward and hugs you again. It's so good to see you again. I was so worried. And, uh, with this happy little reunion going on and uh, the rest of the Indian Tavern sort of looking on in surprise and confusion at this uh, unusual sight of a Tarifel hugging a big black cyborg chocobo. Especially one that talks. That too. I think that's a good place to end this session. Hey. <laughs> hey, we found Rocket's long lost friend. Long lost friend. And so begins our time in this bloody place, Lotto. Until Ni actually finally gets her I really, little order. I really, really, really hope we can all get together for next week for this. <laughs> yes. uh, that, that, that'll be a big if. We'll see. Poor Ni, trying so hard to keep a secret and early annoying me from the process. <laughs> Aw. Alright. So, yeah. Thanks. Low blow trying to... <laughs> With well, and that, me was very much done with your shit at that point. <laughs> Aww. Well, uh, thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, so much for tuning in for this episode of Final Fantasy D6 Chronicles of Eno. Hopefully we can see you next time we play. Hopefully that'll only be a week a week from now for us. But with Tom's upload schedule and Lumina's work schedule, who knows what might happen. So, yeah. Thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Keep listening. Yeah. Bye. Ladies. Bye, everybody. See you again. We're going to have fun in the next session, I have a feeling.